Arcade Perfect, my arse. Okay guys, welcome to another Arcade Perfect, my arse. Now you can probably tell from the writing come up here, this is the mighty Star Wars. Let's uh, batter on, this is the arcade one, being played in MAME on my arcade cabinet. <laughs> Now I'm playing this using the, the track ball and it seems to play quite nicely. It's just that I'm not very good. Well, I've got to say I've got the uh, the vectors looking quite nice. Use the force, Luke. Bollocks, let's just shoot everything in sight. Now, this game was ported to quite a few systems. Luke, trust me. Yours the force. So you'll all be becoming very, very tired of my Obi-Wan Kenobi impersonation. Yeah. Get it. Yeah, it's not half bad actually, the control. Here he is, the son of a gun. Rick Bart, I'm going in. I've got to say, um, unfortunately, I've only ever played the arcade one of this, the actual arcade version proper. I think once they had it in uh, an arcade in Bathgate where I used to go to college. But probably like a lot of Star Wars machines, it was played that often that I'll uh, half the time it was never actually working. And that was the case of this one. I said I think I had maybe one, maybe two games ever. And that is why I'm not very good at it. Oh, hey, there we go. Are you trying to increase the power? You know, I keep. I keep forgetting to shoot these uh, these things after all, the other things that actually kill you. I'm too busy trying to concentrate and... I got to kill! Remember... Excellent stuff. Listen guys, that is Star Wars the Arcade Game. Let's go take a look at some home versions. Okay, this is the Amstrad CPC 464 version. Now I'm hoping I've got joystick control. Um, surely it would have joystick control since I'd built in joysticks. Let's see, see if we can start the game. Maybe not. Right, okay, it's going to be keys then, guys. That's going to be fun. QA, OP. And fire is space, right? Bear with me. Yes. Ah, there we go. It's also got the try to recreate this of 3D intro bit. Oh, 
like the Spectrum one, and if anything, that one probably looks even better. Ah! I have got joystick control, there we go. Ding dang do right, let's go for medium. Now then. Yes! Yep, I like this one. This is very nice. I was again, like the Spectrum one, I was hoping for great things with Amstrad one because both these computers seem to manage vectors rather nicely. And it looks like that this isn't going to disappoint. Take that. Okay, look, there's Darth Vader. Let's take that bad boy out. Like the Spectrum one, the site eventually self centers. Come on. Let's try and take out the top of a tower. Managing it too well at the moment. Hey, there we go. And you. And you. These don't appear to have any on them. This isn't quite so smooth um, as this first section was. But it's actually nice. I mean, it's, it's quite a high res look and it's not, you know. Compared to like the C64 and Atari one, it certainly looks higher res. Nice, nice kind of colours, it certainly looks quite vector like. Shield's gone, oh bugger. It's like 3D death chasers, but right, don't die now, Alan. Keep it together, son. There we go. Those are false, look. Now, you see, this looks apart. Yeah, very, very impressive with that one, guys. That is the Amstrad CPC 4641. Okay guys, this is uh, Star Wars and this is on the Atari 8-bit. Now there appears to be two versions uh, released for the Atari 8-bit. This is by Parker Brothers and this is in, this was released in 1984. So let's give it a wee go. Okay, apologies about that guys. I was struggling to get it to... Uh, to start! Right, hey! Uh, okay, now, first up, you can see uh, this version uses kind of sprites rather than uh, vector graphics that the uh, arcade one employed. Now, I'm struggling a bit still to actually hit anything here. It's uh, fairly fast, nice firing sound. Crosshair moves pretty nice as well. Ah, right, okay, you don't even get the. Uh, so what's interesting here is you're getting the vector graphics for this level. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they employed sprites. You know what, I suppose uh, this this particular level would need, couldn't be anything other than vectors, but yeah, I don't know why they employed uh, sprites rather than vector graphics for the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
the little sprite breaks into six pieces. It's not quite got the same impact of the arcade. Good sound though. It's, it's quite tough actually, but I'm using the uh, my Xbox 360 controller. I'm probably a better off actually going for the joystick. Well, I think I hit the grand total of one. It's a lot explosion thing. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be any sort of explosion, it just disappears when you successfully destroy it. It's, uh, it's alright. It's simply not, well, this is the first version I've looked at. Uh, I'm guessing there's going to be better ones, but I mean, it's not too bad. It's kind of taking a few kind of shortcuts and cheats to, uh, you know, display graphics and that kind of stuff. But anyway, listen, I want to look at the other Atari one. So that is the first Atari bit version, and that's by Parker Brothers. Okay, right, this is the, uh, this is the second version on the Atari 8-bit. Now this was converted by Domark, which, who made, I think, the, the versions on other systems. Pull trigger to start, as opposed to push. Let's go for easy. Yeah, that's quite, quite nice, I like the way that moves. Ha <laughs> There we go. This is a bit more like it. Yeah, no, I mean, it actually, the sprites aren't half bad. There's Darth Vader. I think we can destroy him. Come on! Yeah, it's not got this game over. Was that for real? Let's go for it again. That's that was way too quick. Now I don't know what kind of processor the Atari 800 actually had. Um, now it doesn't appear to be too uh, too good at doing vectors. Now I don't know whether it's just this particular game. This is pretty much what I would expect in the Commodore 64. Whereas the, uh, the Spectrum and Amstrad were certainly more capable. Saying that, I think, uh, what do you call it? No, Corona Swift Mercenary, which was a, a vector graphics game. It was actually a lot better in the uh, Atari, so I guess it just depends on the actual programming or who programmed the thing. But it's not bad, it's not a bad version. I've still got four shields, come on. Hey, at least we got a bit of uh, zooming into the Death Star. See if we can blow this. Ah, bollocks. Certainly miss having the speech, but then I don't think any of the 8 bit versions. Right, you know what? I've had enough of this one. This is the Atari 8 bit, and this is the version by uh, Domark. Okay, let's move on. Okay, this is uh, Star Wars and this is on the Atari uh, 2600. Very, very surprised to see this game actually on it. I didn't realise it was. So, who do we start? Here we go. <laughs> 
sorry, yeah, I'm just, um, I'm just laughing at the, you know, Star Wars arcade game is actually running on the, uh, the 2600. You know, when you look at, uh, now I'm struggling to kind of get to grips with the joystick. <laughs> you know what, this isn't actually half bad. You know, this, this machine has got something like one millionth of a K uh, in memory, and here it is running the arcade, uh, the arcade Star Wars. Yeah, there's a few uh, shortcuts, but uh, you know what, it's not half bad, it's a bloody amazing uh, achievement. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's... It's not going to win any prizes for being a great version of Star Wars, but you know what, and I keep seeing this before, the fact that this game is even running is pretty incredible. In my humble opinion, anyway. And I'm kind of struggling to get to grips with the control, it seems to be all over the place, so I'm just going to sit here. Ah, bollocks. Yeah, the crosshair appears to take on a leaf of its own at times, but I think that's probably more to do with the emulator than the uh, than the game itself. Come on, where's your exhaust port? Yeah, that's why I just want to see the explosion when I do eventually destroy the uh, the Death Star. Yeah, the crosshair seems to move about a wee bit, but like I said, I'm sure it's probably just this. Right, this is my last attempt. Oh, I'm perfectly placed now. Come to daddy. Hey! <laughs> I'll back to that again. You know what, I'm actually, I think that's a, a fantastic little version. I'm sure I'm going to see better, but uh, you know what, absolutely 10 out of 10 for, for effort, it really is. I mean, look at the way these little spaceships are swirling about. They really do give the impression that you're out in space, dog fighting me. I mean, there's even Darth Vader there as well. Hey, anyway, listen guys, that's enough of that. That is the Atari VCS or Atari 2600. Okay guys, this is the Atari 5200. Now I've got to uh, admit I'm not actually sure what an Atari 5200 looks like. Um, the game does look very very similar if not identical to the Atari 8-bit one. It does look very very similar. If not identical, is it the same code? I'm really not too sure. And it's just as difficult. Yep, it certainly looks identical. Let's see if it's got the fantastic explosion. I'm just concentrating on getting this bloody exhaust port thing. Ah! <laughs> twat! I am a twat. Anyway, listen guys, I'm not going to play this one any longer, that is Atari 5200 and it does look exactly like the Atari 8-bit one. Let's crack on. Okay guys, this is the Atari ST one. Let's see, uh, push, it says pull trigger, push trigger to start. Red five standing by. Oh, now I did have a wee shot of this before I started recording and the sound was absolutely perfect. So, I'll do it again, the sound seems fine now. Now, I've got to say guys, I had this 
on my Atari ST and also on the Commodore Amiga. And uh, this was the first game, to my mind, that really utilised the power of the 16-bit. You know, the 16-bit machines did vectors absolutely spiffingly, as you can see here, and using uh, the analogue controls, it was an absolute joy. It's got speech as well. well we've only had one bit of speech so far. Use the force, look. Hey! Look at the size of that thing! Now I noticed the speech is a bit crumbly, but again I'm guessing it could be because I'm playing this under emulation. But yeah, I absolutely love this game. It's an amazing uh, conversion. Really, really good. I've got to say, I've not, you've not heard, heard me say that much very often when I've been doing these uh, Arcade Perfect series. Um, a lot of the times 16 bit versions have been bloody awful, but got to say, for this particular game, the vector graphics, it's an absolute joy. Kaboom! Hey! And it's quite similar to the arcade as well. Let's go for another level, I think. But yeah, the, the, the mouse control really adds to it, it really gives an excellent uh, levelly precision of control. Because he misses the TIE Fighter, the next swing I should say. Well, yeah, I noticed uh, the X-Wings appear to be slightly disjointed, the little centre bit with the where the pilot sits doesn't appear to be joined to the wings. Come to daddy. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. It's even got the, uh, you know, as it tilts as well. Really, really, really nice version. Yeah, this was it. This was the first game when I got this. I really realised that I was, uh, you know, things had moved up a bit. I felt this was this was the reason to warn my ST. That's exactly what I was trying to say there. Yeah, you know, this was just such a good game, almost a, a perfect uh, arcade conversion. Use the force, Luke. Let's go for one run using the force. And I've got zero shields, so it's good night Vienna, and there we go. Right guys. That is the Atari ST one. Okay, this is the BBC Micro. Yep, even the old BBC got a port of Star Wars Bless. Right, let's see, starting wave one. Now, this was configured to keys, so using the wizardry that is Joy to Key, I've now configured it for me joystick. And it doesn't seem to be working too well. Um so yeah. Have we actually hit anything? I don't think I have. I might have actually done better at using the joystick. Not the joystick, the keys, let's go again. <laughs> hey Try and kill something else. Oh, I got another one, yeah, beauty. And another. I'm sure 
if you're adept at using keys, something I'm not, then you would probably do a lot better than I'm doing. But I've got to say guys, it's, apart from the controls, it's actually not a bad looking little version. Um, quite um, sort of, I'm going to say high resolution, but the uh, in fact, you know what, yeah, it is fairly high resolution. Compared to the other other versions I've looked at so far, certainly the, the, the 8 bit ones, it's uh, quite a nice, quite nice looking vectors. Sounds a bit, you know, well, anyway. Um, and like I say, if you can get used to the. Uh, it's just a pity I can't get to the next level. Let's go for one more go. It's to try and do it is not die. Easier said than done, mister. I wonder if I just stay in the middle. See, it seems to, the, the joystick seems to fire off to left and right for some strange reason. But that's probably more to do with this, uh, right, anyway, listen, that's enough of that. It's uh, quite a nice version. I'm sure it, it will control perfectly if you're not like a cat candied monkey like myself. So, BBC version. Let's crack on. Right guys, this is an interesting one. Just as I was about to go into the next version, I discovered there's another version for the BBC. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Uh, the first one, I think, was by Domark. This one is by Gary Partis in 1986. Now, I don't know anything about this game other than the title screen looks bloody fab. Um. Let's press fire to continue. Use sights to select level. It looks awfully nice. Um, except it seems to move in big jumps. Let's go for medium. Now it's obviously going for simplified guns. Shoot all the towers. Right. Am I actually playing? It appeared to just jump straight from the towers to this verse, uh, to this level. I mean, oddly enough, I'm using a control. I mean, I'm controlling the cross here, but I don't seem to have. I don't know. I'm guessing this is some sort of homebrew version, which looks very nice, but it seems completely bereft of any gameplay. It's even telling me to use the force look. Yeah, anyway, listen guys, that is some oddball version on the BBC. Right, this is the Commodore 64 one, and this is the original uh, release that was brought out by Parker, I think it was. Yep, Parker Brothers, and I think this was also 1984. So, how do we start? I'm guessing we press the fire button. Ah, here we go. Right, hey, hmm, okay, now I remember playing this on my 64 back in the day um, and not being overly impressed with it. Again, it's using the same uh, same strategy or technique, strategy is probably the wrong word to use as the uh, Atari 8 the Atari bit. Now, rather than trying to shoot X-Wing, it looks more like you're trying to shoot a sweet, a boiled sweet that your granddad would give you. Perhaps it should be uh, where there's original wars or something. Right, what's happening here? A zero shield, that like game over. Yeah, it's Attack of the Where There's Originals. Or Attack of the Bow Ties, possibly. I mean, the guns look nice. The 64 one has quite a nice firing sound, but it really, really doesn't feel awfully like the Star Wars arcade game. Oh, we've got more bow ties to, to take on. Die, die scum. It's attack of the swarm of bees. Killer pink bow ties. Uh, 
Yes. Right, I think I've probably seen enough of this one. I was actually hoping to get to the trench level and see what uh, surprises it has to offer. Are we going to get? Or oh, maybe not. Kill the killer bees. Yeah, it's it's virtually identical. In fact, you know what? I think the the eight bit version baddies actually look better. They didn't look like sweets. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, bollocks. Any anyway, listen guys, there's plenty more versions to get on with, so we shall crack on. Okay, this is the second version on the Commodore 64. Now, I've got to mention this, uh, it was a bit impossible to try and record it. It had a rather spiffing bit of speech. It said, The Force will be with you. In fact, it was Obi-Wan Kenobi, so it sounded nothing like that. But a very, very crystal clear sample when the title screen appeared. And a rather nice looking title screen as well. So, yeah, quite looking forward to seeing this one. Please don't let me down because presentation wise and the music looks excellent. Ah, I like how it even uh, you've got the, the sort of movement of the guns as well. So, it certainly bodes well. Just trying to concentrate so I can actually kill somebody. The problem with playing so many versions of Star Wars of is one version up moves down, down moves up, and then the next one it's the opposite. Now I think I've yet to hit something. Now at least this one does attempt to do some vector graphics. Come on, hit something, god damn it. Is that Darth Vader? So that's why I can't uh, destroy him. Come on. If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to destroy a ship. Way! Oh, that wasn't even a destroy, I thought it was the getting one. Well, I don't think I killed anything there. I've got to say, guys, it looks really nice. It's just a pity that it's uh, it's so slow. But then we knew that anyway, didn't we? Way kill the second one. Yeah, it really doesn't like drawing all the frames of animation when you destroy a ship. Let's see how it looks when it pans in. Oh, see, that's not bad. Bollocks to this uh, force malarkey. Let's just shoot everything. I've got to see this is a lot better than the, uh, the first version on the 64 that we looked at. Right, let's get into position. Yep, using game pads for games like this really isn't recommended. I know what's going to happen, it's going to appear and I'm going to com completely bollocks it up. Right, here we go, it's giving me a warning. Way! Hey, I actually got a wee bit of animation. Ah, see, that's not bad. Death Star destroyed, let's just see what the next level is. If it's the same as the first one, we'll move on. It's the same as the first one, so we'll move on. Anyway guys, that is the C64 one and that is by Domark. Okay guys, uh, this is the BBC Electron, would you believe? Or Acorn Electron, I should say BBC Electron, that's like me saying this is the, the Commodore 64 Spectrum. This is the Acorn Electron, which was basically the, the BBC's uh, smaller brother and a damn sight cheaper as well. Now again, this is another key frenzy, so this is going to be fun. Up, up, down, let's back to front. Like, you know what, let's just uh, have a crack at it. How do we start? 
What? No, I need to change that. I can't possibly play with these keys. Right. Up. Up. Doesn't like the W. Down. This is going to be fun. The keys are all over the place. Left. Left. Doesn't like that. K. 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 <laughs> this is going to be hugely fun. The keys are absolutely all over the place and back to front. Doesn't even recognise the space. Right, left to right or back to front. Come on, let's get a, a fire button. Some something fire. What about the B? <laughs> H. Right, this is going to be all over the place. Do you want to change these? U, I, and H. No. What? Oh, for crying out loud, red. Do you want sound? Of course, I want sound. Dear me, I've, I've bloody forgotten the keys I'm meant to be pressing. Right, H, fire. You know what? I'm just going to move up and down. Because my left to right buttons are back to front. Hey! Now I've got to say, apart from the atrocious sound, it actually performs not too badly. It's probably almost on a par with this Commodore 64. Well, maybe not, maybe slightly not, but I was very surprised. I mean, how many other arcade games do you see on the Electron? So again, 10 out of 10 for even getting this thing to run. Let's try and press some. Right, let's, let's go for one more game, shall we? H. Let's just move about randomly and press. F oh, there's Darth Vader. And he's big, pointy looking ship there. Have I got any points? I don't appear to have any points at the moment. Come on, we can't die and not have any points. Yeah, I'm sure in the right hands this would probably be alright. One more shield up my arse and it's curtains. <laughs> Shield's gone. One more hit and it's all over. Right guys, that is the Acorn Electron. I'm just um, stunned and shocked that there's even a release and believe it or not, according to that, it came out in 1987. 1987? I thought the Electron had stopped being produced for years before that. Anyway guys, let's move on. There we go. We've got an Electron that's featured in an arcade. Perfect. Who would have thunk it? And brace yourselves, we've even got a version for the MSX-1 which appears to be in bloody French, which I don't speak. Really, vous les regulez de you? Yes. No. Ni relâche vive to attention the joystick. Do you want to change the joystick? Touché. Right. Now, you need to bear with me, because I don't appear to be controlling anything. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Right. We've got a firing noise. Ah, come on. Now that doesn't look very much like an X-Wing. To me that looks like one of these transporter things. Now I notice, I'm wondering, is this in basic? Because the movement seems to stop when you press the fire button. Right, anyway. Let's go for one more go of this. 
it appears to have uh, exited the game. Anyway, that's enough of that, I think. That is a, uh, an inverted commas, Star Wars on the MSX. Okay, and this is actually the PC DOS version. Yep, I've managed to unearth myself a huge bundle of games for the PC, so you're going to see DOS versions now, which I'm delighted about. Uh, this came out in the you go, 1983, and it was uh, released by Broderbund, Broderbund, who were quite a, a successful uh, American company, I think. Now let's see, how do we start this game? Whoops, a daisy. Now, I'm... Uh, Oh, hang on a second, I do apologise. Mouse control, return to game. Right, that's more like it. Okay. Right, now, for some reason, it's jumping all over the place. Now, I've got to say, guys, I did play this a couple of days ago, and it was playing really, really well. Um, so, I can only assume that the, the uh, we can only assume that the mouse control has been affected with this uh, recording software, but I've got to say it looks really really nice. Now you know the vector graphics are the best I've seen bar none. But before we start praising it too much, I mean look at the amount of action on the screen here. I'm guessing it may not have ran quite so well on the, the hardware that it was intended, probably a, I don't know, a 386 or something. You need to remember this is running on a, albeit through emulation, it's still running on a machine which is probably about a thousand times more powerful than the hardware it came out for. Um, but this is a, it certainly plays gorgeously. Absolute looks apart. I mean, it's, it's. I would say it's 60 frames a second. Yeah, it's probably playing way quicker than it would have played. Oops, back in the day. Don't die now. Yeah, I'm guessing this is playing a lot quicker than it would have. <laughs> Oof. Up, down, up, up, down. Up, 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 down. Come on, come to daddy. Way! for it. Oof, that was that. Right, very nice, let's uh, see what's next. But yeah, I mean the graphics would have looked as they do now, back in the day, if that makes any sense. I'm guessing it would have played considerably slower. But I'm guessing it was probably still a pretty good game. Right, let's go for one more wee shot here. Since it seems to be it's still the mouse control seems to jerk me but in this level. But again, I'm convinced it's probably because it's running under emulation. Game over. Anyway guys, listen, that is the, the PC DOS version. And let's move on to the very last version. Okay, right, this is uh, Star Wars, and this is by Parker Brothers, and it's on the ZX Spectrum. Now, I can't for the life of me get this game to actually start, so all I'm going to do is, uh, it kind of goes to a little demo mode thing, so let's just leave it in the demo mode, and uh, I can just talk over it. So yeah, yeah here we go. Um, yeah, I figured out you can press the number 5, well, you could press a number five for some shooting noises. You see, I like that. That's nice and smooth. You know, it's not even it's not even playing ball now. So I don't know what. Let's move the cursor down here. Don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's, in fact, you know what it is. It's on its autoplay as it tells you at the top right. 
It seems to have a uh, similar kind of uh, levels to the arcade. It's that isn't the sort of smoothest uh, I've ever seen. Yeah, it's kind of like ten frames a second or something. I think it is. So it looks it looks quite promising. I mean, that circle panning out like that looks very 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 good. Boom! That'll do as well. That's more like the docking section in Elite. Oh, you even get a little noise. So anyway guys, listen, there is another version of Spectrum, so let's look at that, because I can't play this for Toffee. Let's move on. Right then, this is Star Wars by Domark, and this is on the ZX Spectrum, and I've got to say, it's quite a funky little uh, version of the tune. I like the... You get the, the, the idea. Anyway, ah, David Whitaker. Say no less. How do we start this? Like, let's go for number two. Kempston. And zero to continue, I'm guessing. Oh, and I see, there you go. Kudos immediately, or brownie points immediately to the Spectrum version for having that bit. That's the only version I've actually seen that's got the sort of the 3D bit. Albeit it's a bit shite, but you know what? 10 out of 10 first trying anyway. Right, now we're talking. And I notice it's kind of tried to emulate. If you take your thing, if you move to the side, and then take your finger off the, the fire button, it moves uh, back in now. There seems to be a complete lack of sound, which I don't believe is the case. Now the thing is, I couldn't have turned the sound off because we had the, the music, so I don't know what's going on. Maybe they've deliberately omitted sound to keep up with the uh, the frame rate or something, I'm not too sure. This is uh, actually very nice. Apart from lacky sound, but I'm guessing, I know there's been a few games I've looked at recently and uh, I was complaining about there being no sound. And apparently there is, so there's maybe just something that's uh, not working, but graphically wise and playability wise, this is really nice. I was expecting high hopes from the Spectrum because it seems to be pretty nifty when it comes to doing sort of vector type games. Unlike the C64, which is pish. Let's see how this bit looks. Yeah, now see, that's that's nice. I like that. I really do like that. Yeah, the updating is pretty nice in this as well. Just a shame about the lack of sound, but like I said, I'm sure there is sound somewhere. We could always uh, make up our own sound effects, but I'm sure I'll, uh, I'll spare you the tedium that would be me doing it. Now let's just get our thing lined up for that exhaust port, which is going to be appearing in a second. Come on, is it going to give me a warning like the... Is it the C64 one gave me? Here we go! Oh, now I'm looking for big things with this one. Kaboom! There we go! That's more like it. Yeah, this looks... It actually has got the look of a sort of vector game, which is really nice. Let me just pause this for a second guys, to see if I can get any sound. Nah, don't know what's happened here guys, but anyway, listen, that's a Spectrum one, and that's by Domark, that's a, a really rather nice uh, version.
Let's crack on. Okay guys, this is the very last version we're going to look at and this is the Commodore Amiga. I'm going to turn the sound up a wee bit. Now this is being played on a proper Amiga. Yeah, let's turn the sound up a wee bit more. But I'm going to go for the medium level because I think you get a bit more to look at. Now, like the uh, Atari ST one, it's very, very authentic to the arcade one. It really is. Um, it's probably a lot. It's probably the easiest version. This and the ST because of the mouse control. It really allows for the uh, you know some accurate shooting. And it's got some really nice uh, sound sampling as well, so... Nice and smooth, I mean like I was saying earlier on, this was the, this was the real landmark game for me. It made you really, sort of, at least early landmark game, that you really felt like you had something that was better than your 8-bit Spectrum or Commodore 64. I can't really separate this from the ST, I have to say. It's pretty fast. Like I said, this has been played on the original hardware. Looks like I'm going to eat. Ah, bollocks. Goodbye, Listen, we've seen enough of that one, guys. Uh, okay, you know, let's just get killed. Yeah, but this is this is a, a great version. It really is. Certainly can't complain at that. So, anyway, listen, guys, that is the Commodore Amiga one. That's a great version. So yeah, there's been an absolutely mixed bag of versions. Um, I've got to say, it's been quite an enjoyable feature, this one, because it's uh, included some really bizarre versions that we never thought we'd see. I mean, I think there was two for the BBC, one for the Acorn Elect, one for goodness sake, one for the MSX, which I couldn't even play, I couldn't get it started. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to go through every single version. Um, I mean, the, the popular ones, uh, I mean, the, the Acorn Electron wasn't too bad. It was very similar to the Commodore 64, it has to be said. Quite nice graphics, uh, it was also monochrome. C64 one looked nice, but it just suffers from quite poor frame rate. Um, the Atari 8-bit and the Atari 5200, again, very similar to the Commodore 64, but, well, um, it also didn't, these, that version didn't also use uh, vectors for the baddies, it used little sprites which kind of resembled, uh, what was I calling them, Weathers Originals, looked like little sweets. So yeah, the original version that came out by um, Parker Brothers on the Atari 8-bit and the Commodore 64 wasn't the greatest. Amstrad, brilliant version, really really good version, Spectrum really good as well. Um, I couldn't get any sound working. Atari uh, ST and the Commodore Amiga, really, really good. So I think it's probably going to be no real surprise, guys. Uh, in third place, I mean, it's a very, very close thing. The Spectrum is a great version, but I've got to go for the Amstrad CPC 4641 in third place. Absolutely cracking version. You know, it's got the, the sort of 3D outro or intro, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, intro, I should say. Um, it plays smoothly, it really looks nice, quite high sort of resolution. Um, I can't really separate, in fact, enjoying, in fact, you know what, I'm going to put, yep, Spectrum is going to be in bronze medal position, Amstrad is in second place, but the best home version, in my opinion, is going to be, in fact, you know what, I'm, I'm talking absolute pants here, let me think about this one. Sorry, let me revert. I'm going to go back. Fourth place would be the Spectrum. Third place is Amstrad. Second place, I'm going to go for the PC version. Um, the PC-DOS version. That was really nice. Like I said, it's probably running a bit quicker 
on my PC than it would have 15 million years ago when it first came out, but it looked really nice. Um, so that's second place, but in joint first position, I've got to go for the Atari ST and the Commodore Amiga. Fantastic versions, got the speech, it's got an excellent control system using the mouse. So yeah, that is definitely the version to play. Um, obviously if you can get access to a meme cab or you happen to own your own sit down uh, arcade version, please give me a shout, get the kettle on and I'll be around in 5 minutes. As usual guys, thank you very very much for watching, please uh, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And to finish off guys, thanks for watching.